The Scream Kings are in no way responsible for any encounters with the paranormal, extraterrestrial abductions, eldritch insanity, hauntings, hexes, curses, demonic possessions, cryptozoological sightings, or any loss of sleep from listening to this podcast. This is the Scream Kings podcast. I'm Max George. I'm Nathaniel Darkish. I'm NJ Gallegos. We built a haunted house. We can do a podcast. <gasps> Ready, NJ? Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> <laughs> I worked on that one for you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much. Anytime. Hello, hello listeners. We are back. Uh, we have a very fun episode planned here. We are talking about the movie Hell House, LLC. But let's forget about that because we have a really cool guest on. Uh, everyone, audio meet. Is that a thing? Virtually meet? <laughs> Scare Bear Zero from TikTok, also known as Barrett. Hey, friend. Uh, hello. hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Super honored. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. <laughs> I just consulted my coming. Ouija board, and it's going back and forth from um, applause. So the spirits are applauding you for being on the show. Oh, lovely. Barrett, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, how you got into the world of horror? You're a magician as well, which we'll talk about later, but terrifies me <laughs> on a very primal level. Uh, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been interested in horror, horror, horror for a few years now. I wasn't really into horror when I was younger. I grew up in a in a Mormon household, which, you know, Utah. And um, so we didn't watch horror and things like that. But I remember always enjoying, like, the more scarier scenes from different animated movies that we watched. And, you know, if you remember animated movies from, like, when you were a kid, they were not as tame as they are now. Like, uh, do you guys, have you guys seen The Page Master? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, my gosh. So but it has that one scene with like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I recently rewatched it and I'm just watching it's just like, yay, I remember this as a kid. And then bam. <laughs> oh yeah. And I then like... my it's actually one of my son's favorite movies too and it's weird cuz he he like he doesn't get frightened by anything. Like, you want to know another movie that he's also asked to watch so much? It. (laughs) I I feel like kids love it, though. Oddly enough, you know, I see kids all the time with, like, Pennywise stuff on. I'm like, you're five. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, how how old is your child? He is nine. Just barely turned nine back in January. That's age appropriate for it, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm not a complete idiot. I make sure to uh, mute the mute the slashery stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's weird that he's like, "Can we watch it?" And I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so, what was the the transition? If you kind of grew up not being super plugged into horror, how did that change? Um, well, I kind of, when I got older, I I kind of, I started watching horror movies kind of like off and on. I, so I think the first horror movie I saw in the theater was, I think, The Grudge. So that was around the, the J-horror craze. When was that? Early 2000s? Yeah, that was like, uh, well, I mean, the, the first one was The Ring, which was in 99, if I remember. Wait, no, it was like 02. Mm. The original no, you... Japanese ring was 99, I think. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. But the, uh, Na- what was, what's her name? Naomi Watts? Mm-hmm. The Naomi Watts one, I think that was 03, 02. Yeah, it was 02. Yeah. So the first one I saw in the theater was The Grudge. And then, gosh, what was the next one? I think the next one that I watched was Insidious. Ooh. And... <laughs> I loved it. We watched it at like a at like a friend's house at like a group gathering, and like half the people left <laughs> midway through. <laughs> like there's only like six or seven of us that stayed watching it. 
Did they leave uh, because of the movie? <laughs> yeah, they were. They, it was. It was terrifying for a PG thirteen movie. It's freaking terrifying. Yeah, that yeah. that sounds very quintessential, like Mormon youth gathering, <laughs> and, and then people get too scared, and so they gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I also watched the. I also I also remember. Oh, I don't really classify them as horror movies per se, but they have like frightening sequences. So it's uh, the Sixth Sense and Signs. Oh, Signs is terrifying. That one scene oh, yeah. with the alien so... in the alley. Uh uh-uh. uh. Dude, that <laughs> freaking traumatized me as a kid. I remember. I remember nightmares from seeing that. <laughs> I can't walk by an alley without looking at it and thinking, "Oh no, what if?" <laughs> <laughs> or a cornfield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what is the scariest horror movie you've ever seen, Barrett? That is an excellent question. The Insidious movies are pretty good, but not the scariest. I think the one movie that, when it comes to the scariest movie that I can think of, I think of a movie that continues to frighten me. And the one movie that I can think of that always just frightens me, no matter what, is... It's a found footage movie called Wreck. Yes. Yeah. I you guys seen Wreck? I haven't, but now I need no, to. No. What are you talking about, Max? We ha- did a podcast episode about it. <laughs> about Wreck? <laughs> it's the one yes. where they were trapped in that apartment complex. Spanish? Yeah, it's Zombie-ish. Spanish, too. Oh my gosh, R-E-C. Wow, I'm thinking W-R-E-C-K. <laughs> <laughs> no, R-E-C, Rick. Okay, sorry, I need to go castigate myself. <laughs> yeah, no, that movie's the best. It's That's so right. good. But um, have, have you seen I can't, the second one? I've seen all four of them. Okay, good. So I have them all on box set somewhere. <laughs> awesome. Another... Uh, I, uh, and I can't I can't do a podcast talking about movies that traumatize me without talking about Jurassic Park. Oh, oh yeah. Well, because my dad, he took me to see it when I was like seven. And I was so excited because I love dinosaurs. But once we got in the theater, I was so scared. I spent the entire time with my head in the chair and I didn't even watch it. Oh. So... <laughs> <laughs> So there's another movie that traumatized me as a kid. (laughs) And now you're forever afraid of dinosaurs. That is is not true. I love dinosaurs. (laughs) Dinosaurs rock. Yeah. Um, uh, And so so what's your favorite horror movie? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just really thinking. I don't know. there's, There's so many good ones that I just love to watch. Well, one of the, the ones that I can watch like over and over again is the um, I can watch Exorcist over and over again. Oh, good boy. Paranormal, good boy. Paranormal Activity franchise. I don't mind. I I'll I'll I'll, I'll agree with, with you on the first three Paranormals. Okay, yeah, the first three Paranormal Activities are super good. The fourth one is okay. largely forgettable, except for like the main girl and the main guy. They're like super charming and super funny, so they kind of carry the movie. Mm. The fifth one is good if if you think of it as like an offshoot from the mm. franchise. And the last one, I never remember what happens. Something about a ghost camera. It was bad. Yeah, something about they could see the ghost on the camera, which is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean seeing a paranormal entity on a? camera is stupid well the whole point of the paranormal activity franchise is that you couldn't see the damn thing <laughs> yeah it's, you it would makes no sense uh sinister is another movie that traumatized me Ooh, oh yeah mm-hmm. that's what nathaniel won't rewatch right it got you real good i mean it it's just the the like snuff film sections really felt very snuff filmy in a a way that that kind of icks me out a little bit i understand that sinister huh interesting okay all right i think the second one is more snuff filmy like they really 
sorry, like they really tried to push the boundaries, but they did it in a way that just sucked. Yeah, hmm. the first one is is almost a masterpiece of horror. I think mm-hmm. and it, it's really good for people who are wanting to move out of like the PG thirteen zone. Uh, the second one struggles. I think um, we talk a lot on the the podcast about sequelitis. That if you you kind of know the monster and you know it's coming, the the horror just starts to fall apart. Mm-hmm. And it you kind of have to change it up in a way. Uh huh. Like yeah. you think it when you think of like um, Alien, you have mm-hmm. one alien in the first one, and then the first Alien is like a is like a horror movie. But the second one is like an action movie. Oh, so. people! We just covered this, and I had a very large soapbox that I stood upon. So thank you f- <laughs> for for validating. validating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Suck it, Nathaniel and NJ. Suck it hard. <laughs> Maybe you guys can just go be best friends then. <laughs> we'll probably do that. <laughs> and we'll be best friends over here watching Aliens. A <laughs> and horror Predator. movie. <laughs> so Barry, I found you on the TikTok, the the glorious TikTok. And your channel was one that I saw and I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then like 35 minutes passed and I was knee deep into your <laughs> channel and <laughs> contemplating my decisions. Uh <laughs> you have an awesome, awesome channel. Uh tell us a little bit how you got started in TikTok and the the video you have that has a 1.6 million views? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually got started on TikTok by accident. <laughs> I uh was trying to do the YouTube thing and I don't know, I have a better chance of getting struck by lightning on a clear day than doing YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that happened I happened to me once. <laughs> yeah, it 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 sucks. But anyways, so I was, I remember one time I was injured from work, so I couldn't go to work. So I was just sitting at home bored. And then I was like, hey, why not? I think I'll try switching some of my content from YouTube over to TikTok. And gosh, what was it? The first video I uploaded was... I think it was a video of the Fresno Nightcrawlers. Ugh, gross. Like, do you remember those little things from... Oh, absolutely. It, the, like, no-head, creepy, skinny... They look like a pair of pants. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, I posted a, a, a video about the Fresno Nightcrawlers, and that got about 300,000 views. And then the rest is just kind of history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I really appreciate is you definitely know your shit. A lot of horror TikTokers just kind of flounder a little bit when they are doing. And, and no shade there. I think it's it's an app where that is kind of the intention. You can kind of get on and say whatever you want to say, right? Mm-hmm. But I really was drawn to a lot of your videos because it's very evident you're researching, you're doing the the hard work when it comes to telling a lot of these stories and giving the facts rather than, you know, the the glorified glamour glamour shimmer shimmer kind of a thing. Yeah. Well, I try. I like to give people as as much information as I can find. And I like to kind of let people come to their own conclusions about things. Yeah, yeah, I, I've definitely noticed that as well. But um, the video with the million views, 16 point <laughs> whatever, I have no idea what that what that's on about. So for your listeners, the video that I have that has like over a million whatevers, it's about mermaids. <laughs> And the possibility that mermaids could exist. And it just, it seems so random, but I love that you have this many views about mermaids. Because you you just don't think about mermaids. People, you know, when you talk about paranormal or supernatural, it's ghosts, demons, Ouija boards, Dybbuk boxes, you know, whatever. Very rarely do you think about mermaids. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. Well, I the well, I keep thinking about it, and I guess when it comes to like 
other cryptids like Sasquatch, uh, Bigfoot, Mothman, or whatever the case, like each one of those, you either believe it or you don't. There isn't a whole lot of in between, I don't think. But mermaids in the ocean, like, yeah, you don't believe in them, but then again, the ocean's such a big freaking place, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, the ocean is wild. Plus, yeah. Christopher Columbus believed in mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and didn't he, he saw them? Didn't he draw a bunch of them or something? Yeah, yeah. He he like claimed that he saw mermaids while they were heading to the New World. And there you go. He murdered thousands. Of Everything thousands Christopher of Columbus people. did was right, so we're gonna believe in mermaids. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> mermaids are real. <laughs> All right. Well, Barrett, uh, you wanted to talk about one of your favorite movies. Uh, Hell House LLC, and I'm surprised we haven't talked about this on the show yet. NJ and Nathaniel, do you guys want to give us a quick little summary um, about the show? It's pretty straightforward. I mean, I I, I could uh, take the, the reins on this one. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Aw, thanks. Um, that, that was Jesus' voice. Um, no, I knew no. it. <laughs> So, uh, Hell House LLC is a uh, found footage uh, mockumentary film. It's basically presented as a documentary that's been put together about uh, an incident at a uh, haunt attraction called Hell House that is run by a, a an LLC called Hell House LLC. Uh, basically, this is a group of friends who uh find this old hotel this is like the fifth or sixth year that they've been doing different haunt attractions in the new york area um this <clears throat> hotel the abaddon hotel is in a place called abaddon uh fittingly and uh they make this attraction and bad things happen because of presumably some weird culty stuff that happened in the past that maybe made this place haunted and, and terrible. Uh, ultimately, their launch, uh, their first night, uh, results in some death and chaos and destruction, and so the documentary crew tries to piece together what happened, and that's, I guess, essentially the, the movie. Yeah, it's a pretty classic mockumentary type of a film, found footage meets mockumentary um i really appreciate mockumentaries and found footage nathaniel i know you really like a good found footage film as well oh yeah uh a lot of times they're hit or miss for me uh, oh big does, time this one does a really good job though i think um not only from the found footage aspect but as well as a mockumentary it doesn't try and reinvent the wheel by any means uh pretty straightforward in its approach nj what do you think about kind of found footage and mockumentary i i enjoy it for the most part um you know i'm a reality tv junkie so anything that's kind of adjacent to that i enjoy um the only thing i don't like about found footage is it kind of tends to be shot like shittily sometimes <laughs> um and i i have very weak cochlea so i get like car sick very easily so I can't like I have to like put a scopolamine patch on and like watch oh my these God. things. <laughs> I'm I'm I, such a, a pussy. I have never sad. ever ever heard someone like, oh, yeah. I just have a weak cochlea, <laughs> <laughs> and I will be using that from now on. Thank yeah. you. My co they are how, very how, weak. How have you not heard my wife say that exact phrase? Max? <laughs> I don't know. Has she really? It. Oh yeah. She, well, usually you sister. just say you had a weak stomach <laughs> yes. or something. But cochlea just sounds so much cooler. It's true. And, and it's, it's more such an awesome organ. <laughs> anyway, cochlea's a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did appreciate this one a little bit as well, um, talking about cochlea's, because it didn't, I think, go as hard as other films like Blair Witch Project where it's literally someone holding a camera and just you see every single step that they take. It did rein that in a little bit, 
and allowed the story i think to play out more naturally if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah i've never been able to watch the blair witch all the way through even with the scopolamine patch <laughs> <laughs> that's a shame that's a great movie yeah it is a great movie i know Barrett, how about you? Do you prefer the documentary or found footage films, or well, is this kind of an, an exception? Well, found. I love my found footage is probably my favorite um, branch of the horror of the horror genre. So I I can eat up all, all I can eat up found footage all day. So, but yeah, you and but, me, you and me both. If I had to choose, I I love a good found footage. Oh yeah, but. I think it's like you said, they're really hit and miss and you usually have to sift through a lot of crap to find a good one. <laughs> but the, the, the movie that really got me into found footage was, well, two of them. There's Hell House LLC and uh, Grave Encounters. Mm. Have you guys have, have either of you guys seen Grave Encounters? Yes, uh -uh, I have not seen I, that one. Oh, seen it. you need to see Grave Encounters because it is so good. Yeah, that is, one's fun. Is it like drama mean level or like what do I need? <laughs> I, uh, you might there's not a yeah. there's not a whole lot of the shaky cam stuff. I mean it's pretty set. Alright, cool. But there you, are a lot of camera glitches and I hate camera glitches. What you really need to do is just uh figure your life out, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, teach your cochlea to be strong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Listen, not to hijack this portion, but we went to uh, Alaska and had a really rough day at sea. And I had like a scopolamine patch, Zofran, Dramamine. Um, oh, my wife gave me an Ativan. And then she gave me another Ativan and was like, shut up and go to sleep. And then finally I passed out and stopped throwing up. So I am a total wuss. You can't throw up if you're unconscious. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, you I mean, can, can yeah. and I can kill well, yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> at that point, I wanted to be dead, so it was like a win-win either way. Go going back to just kind of like what what makes I think found footage such an interesting genre, and this is something I talked about a little bit before, uh, quite a few episodes ago. So, so I think it's it's worth kind of bringing back up. Is I I, I love how found footage inherently uh makes it so we have to uh suspend our disbelief less than like the average movie you know because yeah. it feels more grounded in reality yeah. you know, it's the same kind of thing that you know a, a good uh epistolary novel will do where you know it feels like oh like, like if it's made out of letters or diary entries like you know a book can suddenly be that much more grounded you know that's that's like mm -hmm. I, I i just remember back when i was in like i don't know eighth grade or something and read Dracula for the first time, encountering that kind of format just, like, opened up my head and went, you know, made me go, oh my gosh, like, a story can be this? It can, like, feel real like this? And, you know, found footage is just the same thing for me. And so, yeah, like, when it works, it can really, really work. Well, some of the best found footage movies that I can think of were the kind where you genuinely didn't know whether it was real or not. And mm -hmm. I think I think over the years that's kind of passed. I mean, people just kind of know, oh, this is a movie, so it's not there. There isn't that suspension of disbelief, like you said. But I remember when the Blair Witch Project came out at, at school the next day, kids were just at each other's throats, just like it was real. No, it's not real. But they're missing. They said they're gone. Da 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 da. And I'm just like, yeah, oh, God, my yeah. goodness, guys. Yeah, we um we actually had one of the guys who uh, worked on that film uh, on the podcast. Uh, he's been on a couple of times. Uh, his name is Ben Rock, and uh, mm. he told us a, a story that like when they were um, premiering it at I think it was at Cannes. Um, yeah, yeah. They had uh, a bunch of like uh, missing posters all around as, yeah, as their way yeah. of promoting it uh, of of the you know the the main characters and the police got mad at them uh, <laughs> because there were actual missing people around that time too and so they're like people aren't taking our missing posters seriously because of your dumb movie stuff um <laughs> hey but, it but, was yeah, like, per perfect uh, perfect advertising i think exactly yeah. he's like i don't regret that at all <laughs> uh, so going back to the film a little bit let's talk about a few more points that we really appreciate um 
I thought the opening scene was really chaotic and in the best kind of way. There's a lot of panic, a lot of fear that kind of starts the film off. The the mockumentary opens with these investigators trying to figure out what happened and uh, the, the incident is occurring at the, the haunted house, which this film, again, is adding to my list of reasons why I hate these kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I refuse to go to these haunted house events because of things like this movie. Um, and I think that thread is being pulled very well in the the entire film is this unknown paranoia throughout, even with a group of individuals who are staying at the hotel to turn it into, you know, their haunted house and we kind of get to see their backstory. Um, I, I think they do that pretty well. What What does everyone else think? Well... I I think that with all the actors they're so they're so natural like I genuinely believe that these guys are friends mm-hmm. like they yeah. like they ha- like they probably hang out in real life and things like that but uh after working at a haunted house before myself it's pretty pretty accurate the kind of things that you have to worry about and you know what what could happen opening night and Hopefully there's not a homicidal cult there. (laughs) (laughs) Is that something you cover like on the first day? Here's what you do if there is a homicide. Yeah. It's like an OSHA meeting. Like, hey, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) If you Uh, see someone with a missing head, ignore (laughs) them. (laughs) Um, I also enjoyed a lot of the scares that they did. I think hell house does a really good job of doing background creepiness that if you're watching it for the first time you might not see or you'll just get a glimpse of and have to rewind it Uh, a lot of shadows in the background uh, and i i'm terrified of shadows in the background (laughs) even in real life i i have a large lake that sits behind me and there's a dock and every night i look out my kitchen window and think oh boy one day there's gonna be someone there and i'm gonna pee my pants (laughs) Yeah, one of those movies to where every time you watch it, something new pops up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think they did a really good job of that. Mm-hmm. Not all of the scares are maybe executed the best way, but sometimes those subtle background catches really invoke eeriness and terror. And I think this movie does that well. Mm-hmm. Uh, one totally of the, probably my favorite scene is the strobe light scene where they're kind of testing the cameras. The guy locks himself in the little creepy alley. They turn the lights off and they activate the strobe light. And you you almost get a little nauseated by cochleas where yeah. upset. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't really know what's going on, but you can see that something is kind of encroaching on the actor. But it it's so chaotic, you don't know what is happening in that was really spooky. I don't know. I, I loved that. What What do you other people think as far as the scares go? My my favorite probably is when um, Paul turns on the video camera, and then there's that spooky dead girl just sitting against his wall, and then he sees it, and he does the standard, you know, like a little kid thing, like, oh, I'm gonna hide myself under the blanket, <laughs> and it it'll go away, it'll be fine, and then he takes it off, he's like, oh shit, no, it's not. Uh, that that gets me pretty good. Um, I love that. Now, the see for me, like a lot of the clown scares, especially just like the clown, the he- like like when the head turns and stuff. Yeah. Uh that one that one gets me in and like it's such a simple scare, right? Like it shouldn't work that well, but it freaking does. It just like and 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 I think that's one of the the great things about this is that you can have scares that really get under your skin and it like literally the budget on that is someone turning a thing's head. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I, it's I it's think... cheap as free and yet it still scared the crap out of me. I think it's one of those things where we are so used to the CGI and the, again, glimmer, glimmer, shimmer, shimmer of today's movies. And then the that, loud screaming jump scares. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and the, the killer is there. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And so I agree with you, Nathaniel, that clown is spooky as is. But then the camera pans away and then he plans back. And it just, it gets you. <laughs> I do not like it. Um, Barrett, the... what's? 
Sorry. Oh, and I was just gonna say, in the design of especially that that you know kind of iconic one with the the black streaked uh black black streaked paint under his eyes is yeah. such a freaky clown design. And it, like I don't know what it is about it, but it just like really gets under my skin like you know few clowns do. Mm-hmm. Clowns are the worst. We let's we should be done with clowns, <laughs> America. We're done. No more clowns. The only kind of clown I like is a rodeo clown. No, even them. Out. We're done. <laughs> Remember that year where where there was just clowns all summer? That yeah. was 2016, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Terrifying. Again, yeah. we're done. And we, the, and we thought that that was as bad as things could get. <laughs> hey, I'll oh, take no. I'll take scary clowns over COVID any day. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fair. We were young, we were dumb, we didn't know that, you know. <laughs> I'm still saying it. Clowns out. We're done. No more clowns. Ugh. I um, miss you clowns. <laughs> <laughs> uh Barrett, what was one of your favorite scares in the in the film? Um The it was Paul and the Twisted Head mannequin one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, so I think that one was the first one where he's trying to convince them, hey, the head moved, but, you know, nobody's believing him. And my mm. my second favorite is when they're going through the house at night, which is just an awful idea in and of itself. <laughs> and they find Sarah and they leave that room. And then all of a sudden they turn around and, like, the plate is set. The yeah. clock the is chiming. Lit. The candles are lit, and it's <laughs> oh my! <Yeah>. Again, <laughs> it's another very simple way to freak us all out, and I, I I love it. And you don't you don't know what's happening. You don't see the uh, the quote unquote creature or the ghost or anything like that. It's just left up to your imagination, and. You, the human brain can think up of way more messed up stuff than anybody can show you. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. See, fan fan theory here. Um, I think that if they had just sat down and had a nice meal, that clearly the ghosts <laughs> were trying to provide for them at that point. It would have yeah, been fine. What if it? But but they rejected the enti- hospitality. <laughs> Everything what if this happened. entire film is just about a hotel? It's like. Beauty and the Beast, but ghosts instead of <laughs> seeing Well, well they tried to do that in the second movie. <laughs> That's fair. Oh. Oh. Um, let's not go there quite yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to ask, if we were all put into a scenario like this, at what point would you say, nope, this is not a good idea, backing out? Is that That is... I think a problem that found footage has is they create these very realistic experiences until it gets too scary. And then people just, you know, they have they all stay. sorts of different they, reasons. Yeah. To stay and tough it out. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's always, so, it's always white people. They're like, look at this creepy haunted place. Let's no, you're set up a little place. here. You're honestly. totally right. No, it is. White people not... have no survival instinct. None. That's true. No. So when would you guys kind of nope out? Uh, when they said, do you want to go to New York? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would have noped out when I'd walked into the basement and saw the high heel like buried in the dirt. Um, the Bibles. Eh. Yeah, the hotels the spooky have Bibles. Things, the the spooky things on the wall. Eh, I'd be interested in that and want to like take pictures and research it because that's me. But a high heel in the basement, kind of buried in the dirt. I've read too much true crime to be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Nathaniel, NJ. There's two parts of me. So there's the germaphobe part. Where I would walk in and it's just a creepy abandoned place and I would think of all of the rats that were taking shits there and the diseases I could get. So like that part would just get the germaphobic part of me. Um, And then whenever they were like, let's just stay overnight for a month or whatever. Like I would have been like, why? Why are we doing this? (laughs) Yeah. Why not find a hotel? Like a real hotel. 
Go find the or best western. The, the camper or whatever that's in the back, even. Jesus. Yeah. Nathaniel, what about you? Are you the dumb white guy who's going to stay the whole time? Well. <laughs> Okay, so so there's two things that 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 my mind goes to. Part of me is like I've always wanted to to work in a haunted house, so like I would be real committed on that side of it. But I would also be really tempted to just nope out of there as soon as Paul started being like a super sexist a hole, which is about three seconds into the movie. So you know, <laughs> oh yeah, Paul is the worst. Yeah, as soon as he's like, uh, well, well we she go. could be topless, guess, guys. Um, and nobody's sticking around. <laughs> Uh, let's not work together. By the actually. way, I'll find another. By place. the way, somebody who's somebody who's worked at a haunted house before that would never happen. Like you uh, yeah. would not chain one of your actors like that. For real. I'm just watching. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. That and is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh. No matter how excited she was about it. <laughs> <laughs> She just didn't say the safe word. <laughs> no. oh, yeah. All right, let's maybe not blame the victim here, white people. Damn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, here, um, I, I, I'm curious. Um, which version of this movie did you guys watch? Did you watch the original theatrical version or did you watch the director's cut? Because the director's cut has a little bit more of how that whole thing played out with her. So there's not a whole bunch in the director's cut. I -hmm. think there's maybe, I want to say maybe like five to ten minutes of extra stuff. Yeah. But there's, because I've watched the director's cut thinking it was going to be super awesome. Uh, There was some stuff that sort of filled in some gaps, but not enough to where you're like, oh, you need to see the director's cut kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, to, to me, I think the, the most notable thing was really just showing us a little bit more clearly what happened in the basement. Mm-hmm. That is so upsetting. And that was a literal, like, hole in the earth to hell opened up and dragged <laughs> down. <laughs> which, which didn't look great. Abaddon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, 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 and also, like, the idea that, like, oh, yeah, he's, like, a you know, the, the guy who owned it was, like, wanting to be a modern Dante. Okay, so that's I think what was paying off there, but yeah, like like the effect didn't look great, and I think that's why they ultimately cut it uh, in the original you know theatrical version. But but it was kind of interesting to go like, oh okay, they literally opened up hell. Yeah, I don't think you saw that until maybe the third one, maybe the second one. I don't yeah. really remember the second one a whole lot. Which is a shame, because my occult knowledge is going to kind of pop up here, but in the Apocrypha, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and even in the Christian Bible, Abaddon is a very big player. Uh, It it is kind of two things. One is kind of this pit that you can enter to go to Sheol, which is the Bible's version of hell. Um, And in Revelations, Abaddon, or Apollyon in the Greek, is the, the demon of the pit. This... This creature that unleashes a horde of locusts on the world. And so it, it's a very prominent occult figure. And one of my crit- criticisms of the film is we didn't get a lot of that backstory. We didn't need a lot. But if there was this cult that was working out of this hotel using such a prominent figure and the city is named after this biblical figure, I wanted a little bit more just so we had a better context of the chaos that was happening in the end. And and they do admittedly go into that in the sequels, but fortunately the sequels did have some other issues. Yeah, and I mean it, it, if we're looking at this as a it's a standalone film, it, yeah. it's a little confusing. Yeah. I, I, I agree completely. Especially like introducing these ideas and, and presenting it as though it is has been tied up in a neat package, but then it fails to quite and tie I, up that element. And when, really it, when, it, when it just dangles in the chaos at the end especially with the incident that happens it's panicky again very similar to the beginning of the film and then the documentary crew goes and checks out you know room 2c yada yada i feel like it would have been better had we known you know this cult leader is finally accomplishing what they wanted or whatever but uh nj 
Barrett, what do you guys think about the ending? Yeah, think it like thinking of it as like a standalone movie. Like if I had not seen any of the other ones, I would have liked a whole lot more to it. <laughs> like they just kind of like this this hotel is this uh, shining hotel that's supposed to like capture you or whatever, but it wasn't giving me what I had wanted. Yeah, but it's kind of yes. it's kind of hard to say that when I've seen like the sequels afterwards and be like, oh, okay, that's a, that did that, that's good. <laughs> yeah, because I I haven't seen any of the sequels because I was expressly told not to watch them <laughs> pretty much by you guys. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I I only see it in that you know standalone fashion. And yeah, I mean, I agree. I wanted to know more backstory and I wanted to know more about the hotel owner, honestly. Like, I think that that would be a more, almost more interesting story. Obviously, it wouldn't be as much of a haunted house found footage thing, but I want to know more about and that guy. Whenever there are demons involved, Max just needs more, right? <laughs> Uh, so I'm glad you guys agreed. Well, one thing that I can say about the movies, because yes, yes, they do take a dip in quality as they go on, but it's a very complete story. Because like once you get to the third movie, all the little knots and bows have been tied off, and it's a very satisfying conclusion. I mean, they still leave some threads unpulled to like maybe come back to it later on but and they've already released a fourth one so they're taking advantage of that do they explore the hotel owner more in the sequels yes they do okay all right cool mate i'm not gonna listen to you guys i'm gonna watch it. <laughs> do it don't let us gatekeep you from living your life well, if you want any more found footage recommendations, just ask, because I have so, so many. Ugh, give me all of them. Okay. <laughs> um, let's maybe talk about some of the things we didn't like about the film, because it, it it's a great movie, but it's not uh, the best in some aspects. Um, we already talked about Paul is just a piece of trash, a uh, sexist monster. Well, he's. He needs... I I think of Paul as like the the stereotypical sexist guy. I mean, you see that archetype in so many movies. Like, I don't even think about it anymore. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Fair, definitely fair. Um, yeah, I'm glad he got what was coming to him. <laughs> yeah, it it's makes just the unfortunate. Better. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You go. But I will say it is just kind of unfortunate that we're experiencing so much of the movie through his lens, literally here, Mm -hmm. Um, because, I don't know, we just have to deal with him just, you know, constantly narrating, you know, well, is it, it, you know, she bangable? Zoom in, you know, like, oh, really? Like, (laughs) is is this all we got? Um, I don't know. He just doesn't seem like the the best professional videographer that you would want to pay money to, uh, you know document stuff for your company um i also thought sometimes the acting was a little hit or miss um especially like during the interviews right like yeah yeah the the interviewer felt a little stiff the interviewee felt a little stiff um and i don't know if that was an acting issue or more like a script thing uh i've noticed i've noticed that in a lot of different found footage movies when the actors are kind of allowed to just kind of be themselves. It's a lot better, but when they start quote unquote acting, you're really just kind of like, like, is it, did you only have the one take or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause I, I agree that like, especially when you know, you have, you have kind of the group dynamic and they're joking around, they do feel like, you know, people who are friends with each other um, in a way that does feel very natural. But yeah, when, when it's like, Ask a question, stilted response. You're like, uh, I, eh, yeah, was okay. that my script? But I mean, that that's probably kind of a, a hot mixture of both the script and the acting there. Um, what else did you guys particularly not enjoy about the film? I hate to bring it back to my cochlea, but um, <laughs> the the strobe scene, like, I agree, it was very creepy. But it, it was almost too much for me to handle to like 
watch and see what was going on because I wanted to throw up. Yeah, I don't do well with strobe lights. And it it's funny because like, I've seen this movie a couple times and the first time I watched it, that scene creeped me out real, like really effectively. This time when I was watching it, I think it's just because like my like night vision got shot when I took some medicine and it messed up my eyes. Anyway, that's a side tangent. But just like watching it, I was just like, I don't even know what the hell is going on because like my eyes just can't handle that like intense flashy light in in a way that allows me to process what's going on in between the flashes. Yeah, like it it, it helped whenever they stopped it and they were like. Here's the the new guy right there. See him? I was like, oh yeah. Now I'm scared. Like, oh, there was another guy there. I I, I see that. Yeah. You'll need to do some cochlea exercises. I was fine. Listen, <laughs> there's there's nothing I can do. Like Max, I had to sit in like a booster seat until I was like 14 because I couldn't see over the like dash of the car and I would throw up every time we took a 10 minute car ride. <laughs> like there's nothing I could do about this. I think we need shirts now, Nathaniel, that say this horror movie is bad for my coke. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I did think some of the scares in the film were a little, you could kind of see them coming. Uh, anytime there are creepy clowns, you know something's going to happen, right? And so that was a little disheartening that you could kind of anticipate what was about to happen. Kind of the low-hanging um, fruit scares. Yeah, yeah, not even a jump scare per se, but, you know, for horror movie nerds like us, we, we've kind of seen it before. Mm -hmm. Um, I I can recognize that someone who isn't as in tune with horror movies would be pretty creeped out, for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted a little bit more. One thing that was like a specific plot point that really kind of irks me in this movie is that like we have some sort of secret that is delivered at to one of the guys, the one who like quit in that that big fight. <gasps> yes. I think his name is oh, Tony. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they like yeah, Tony, yeah, Mark. sit out in the field and and tell him something. Oh, yeah. What the fuck gosh. was the secret? I forgot about this too. And yeah, it's like oh, it's this very important thing. And he goes, okay, I'll stay. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. You have to tell me what that is, or I just feel like you had no idea, and so you just had to make it seem like it was some sort of secret that that you know the audience is not privy to yeah so i've i've i always thought that if you were going to cut things why not cut that part because yeah i mean i think you can kind of somewhat sort of maybe guess what it is because obviously it's probably something that has to do with money but just the way that it's set up it's just kind of like we don't need this in our movie right now especially if you're not going to tell us yeah, you know, you can have him storm out and then, you know, just have him apologize and then come back. And That, that would have worked way better. <laughs> if it was such a provocative secret that caused this guy who was near a mental breakdown to stay, like, that's relevant to the plot, and it could be compelling. Ah, but... In another life, I'll direct the film and make it better. <laughs> <laughs> In the multiverse. More demons. More demons! <laughs> ah, all demons for everyone! You get a demon! You get a demon! <laughs> what? Okay. I just have to say it. Hell House seems like the lamest haunt attraction ever made. Like, it was so lame. Just the name, or...? No, 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 not the name. Oh. Like, just, like, that it's just a bunch of freaking, like, spirit Halloween... <laughs> like just animatronic <laughs> crap scattered around a building with like two actors at the end. I yeah. really appreciated like the large Amazon spiders. We have one <laughs> at my house. Uh my daughter calls it Betsy. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. Like just to see. I, I agree with you, Nathaniel. It's like, oh, they had a hundred dollars to Amazon for props, and this is what they got. Yeah, and and that and and they didn't hire anyone else to be an actor. They have the person taking the tickets, and then they have the chained girl and the clown dude. That yeah. was it. And he didn't and, even and, do and, his eye thing. 
Which yeah, was, exactly. Which was gross <laughs> and real. I don't. Oh my gosh, I hate eye stuff. I hate eye stuff. Same. So, yeah, and and it's funny because it actually reminds me that like it's really interesting that you know we're we're shown like some of these other people that are there that like seem like they're they're actors. You know the the bartender yelling at people, the dude in the kitchen yelling at people. But those are actually some of the ghosts because we don't have any other context for them, and they have the weird eyes that the ghosts have, which was kind of fun, like in retrospect. I didn't even notice that. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's wow. creepier now. Interesting. <laughs> I never thought of that. I don't. Are they really the ghosts from other people? Yeah. They yes. are. Yeah. Well, now yeah, I, I gotta watch them. Yeah, I thought they were actors too. Yeah, I thought they were actors this whole time. Yep, no, they are. They have the ghost eyes, and and yeah, like you never see any anyone that would be the actors for those those roles. Hmm. I guess I just thought they like hired people behind the scenes and didn't show it. I mean, they didn't show us the secret with the the other guy, so I was just like, oh, all right. That's what yeah, that's what I eyes. always thought. Like they had a couple of actors they hired, and then it was just like, oh, we're gonna do like two more over here. But but that said, even though they are the ghosts, which kind of makes them a little bit cooler. They were still really lame because it's just like the uh, 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 get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you're like really that's that's as scary as you're gonna give me as just some some dude yelling from a bar. So, a couple things were also really really obviously like uh, foreshadowing that paid off. Like oh I'm in room two two C and then they like spend so much time. All right oh room two C oh we don't have that room. Like you instantly know, like oh okay, oh, well, she's they're at the hotel. You see at the hotel. Okay. Well, and like I Nathaniel, rolled my eyes so hard at that. Yeah, you and I both worked at a hotel, and you can't just go up to the front desk and be like, "Hey, I want to know where Draco Malfoy is staying." <laughs> and the front desk like, "Oh yeah, I, I don't know who you are. Let me tell you if this person is at my hotel." And, yeah. uh, Ah. Unless, uh, I mean, like, you know, maybe if they had bribed her or something, but she's like, oh, just, okay, yep, yeah, here she is. <laughs> oh, wait, no one's here? Okay, well, uh, sorry. Yeah, let me keep I, checking for you. I guess I thought they were, like, filming at the hotel, like a conference room kind of thing. I mean, I think so they, they were, knew. but even still. I, I guess I just thought that, like, the front desk knew that they were all together. I don't know. Yeah, but she came up separately. I don't know. It, it, it's still just like one of those like, oh, what room is this guest staying in? Yeah. If you give that out, then you're going to get sued. Yeah. You just gave away the room number to a serial killer. Yep. Also, just a few things were just like occasionally things were cut in a way that I didn't know what was going on. Especially like I feel like the, the transitions between some of the interviews and stuff that was going on in the past and all of that felt like it was like the worst amateurs making a documentary out of this as opposed to like someone who has some documentary experience making it i don't know it just feels like like they they were trying to give us this like veneer of these are documentarians who kind of know what they're doing or like um, it didn't actually feel a like couple that. of times they'll do the whole question and answer thing but it's the same question Kind of like, what happened on that night? We have no idea. What happened on that night? We don't know. What happened on that night? We have no idea. It's like, okay, nobody knows. So let's keep going here. <laughs> um, I, I, I liked the characters. They did feel like a real group of friends, but also I didn't like the characters because they were all kind of terrible. And I... I can hold space for... I, I don't have to like the characters for it to be a good film, right? But you do need to give us a few redeeming character arcs so that we are compassionate to their their plight. I, I want to care if they're going to die or not. And I think the whole secret thing could have been that, and it just kind of fell on its face. And so I, I just didn't care about a lot of them if they lived or died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, maybe if the secret was... No, he doesn't want to tell anybody, but his mom is dying of cancer, and they need this money to be able yeah. to pay mm -hmm. for her treatment. Like, then I'd be like, oh, okay, well, at least there's that. And it tackles that found footage issue of, why are they staying? What, what is, they've seen things, clearly. Everyone's kind of freaking out, except the lead guy. What is making them say, we're going to eke it out? Anyway, we've we've kind of talked about this already. 
Yeah. I like, had a hard time um like keeping track of the white guys. Yeah, Before. too many white guys. <laughs> That's why I was kind of like not saying that I enjoyed that Paul was a fucking creep, but like it was helpful because I was like, oh, that's Paul. He's the gross one. Got it. <laughs> well, I always get Tony and Mark mixed up. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. I right? always get Tony and Mark mixed up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I love that like all of their names are, are like the most basic white guy names. Paul, Alex, Tony, Mark, Andrew. <laughs> like, oh, good heaven. Like... I only knew so Sarah. That was Sarah. it. <laughs> That's it. Well, and there was some plot elements with Sarah even that I wanted more of. Yes. Actually. Yeah, she seemed Had to be the like, token girl. Yeah. For sure, for sure. But it and also I felt like a... they were building something around her that they just didn't quite yes. get to. Yeah. She had some weird ethereal connection with the spirits, perhaps, or like there's that scene where she's in the field looking at the gravestone. Yeah, like the tombstone thing. Yeah, yeah, and there was just stuff that we... But even early on in the yeah. movie, where, like, they find a... What was it, like, a plate or a photograph or something? And he's like, hey, this like, looks like Sarah, looks like doesn't it? But yeah, that never went anywhere. Um, anything else we want to talk about as far as criticisms of the film before we move into maybe some hotel stories? <laughs> um, we have a note about Hotel Patricia, and I know I didn't write that down. Who has the Patricia story? That would be me. So, speaking of my Cochlea Alaskan cruise... Um, I I love that this entire episode has been dedicated to your cochlea. And Jay. This uh, week's episode. By... This week's episode is brought to you by Dramamine. Yeah. <laughs> and the inner ear. I'll uh, I'll email them and see if they want to sponsor us for this one. Um. So we flew to Vancouver to um, take off for our cruise. The boat was ported there. And so my wife, she was my girlfriend then, we got into Vancouver at probably like 11 p.m. Um, I'm cheap, and I was like, I'm not going to upgrade my phone to like be able to use in Canada, so I like couldn't talk to my family or anything. And we told the taxi driver, take us to the Hotel Patricia, because the travel agent booked this for us. And initially, I thought it was like a language barrier issue, because he looked very like bewildered. And then we're like, no, yeah, it's the Hotel Patricia. And he's like, all right. And so we're driving <laughs> oh, through no. Vancouver. It looks nice and idyllic. And we're like, oh, I can't wait to get to the hotel. And we turn. And it was like The Walking Dead. Like it was uh -oh. like, so imagine that like, you know about the Hotel Cecil, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So you know how it's on Skid Row? Yeah. This is like the Vancouver Hotel Cecil. So there's just a bunch of. Um, you know, like, unfortunately, homeless people and things um, are, oh boy. yes, and we go in to this hotel that looks, like, I would rather stay at the Bates Motel, quite honestly. Like, I would be like, this is nice. It had this, like, creaky elevator that would totally kill you. We went into our room, and I was like, well, I gotta go to the bathroom, but I was already panicking because we were gonna die. I shut the door, <laughs> and there was a blood spatter on the wall. <gasps> no, no way. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. Ew. So I think it, if I had to guess, I think it was probably from like, I imagine people probably get this hotel like by the hour or something, right? And they mm -hmm. go to, yeah. you know, do their drugs or Kind of like the, the Cecil Hotel. Exactly. Yeah. And um, it, it was just like a very stifling, creepy vibes. You know what I mean? Like, you just did, walk in and you're like, this is really yeah. wrong. Did you see Richard Ramirez or any other serial killers <laughs> who were staying there, like the Cecil Hotel? <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not. <laughs> yeah. I I threw a, an absolute shit fit. I was like a Karen. I was like, I want to talk to your manager! And then... Um, I think in that case, I, the Karen attitude is justified. Yeah. yeah I I think that energy is actually a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I lost it. And then probably um, the the reason that you're still alive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went to a five star wow. hotel after I demanded my refund, and we got like personalized robes and slippers, so it was a lot better. <laughs> there you Heck go. yeah. I was 
I also have to ask, did the water turn brown because it was being polluted by a dead girl's body in the water tank, like the Cecil Hotel? (laughs) (laughs) It it was more of a green from, I think, like a leprechaun or something. Oh, that's not better. No. (laughs) Oh, um, my hotel experience is not as gripping or terrifying. I have two, uh... The first one is just kind of silly, but there is a pretty famous haunted hotel out here in Utah. Uh, It's called the Ben Lomond Hotel. Uh, It now has some dumb name, like, I can't even remember. Very phallic sounding name. (laughs) What is it? This is going to drive me crazy. One sec. The Bigelow. The Bigelow. Yeah. Somebody named it that seriously? Yeah, Yeah, right? Like gross and it's very well known for being haunted a lot of uh ghost finders have been there yada 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 so uh ex-boyfriend and i went to stay for valentine's and i brought my ouija board and we (laughs) stayed people man (laughs) yeah (laughs) i know (laughs) we stayed on the floor that was supposed to be haunted we got the ouija board out we're playing with it and it started to move is that I was kind of freaking. <laughs> it kind of freaked me out. So it's like, oh god, it's actually working. This thing I don't believe in is actually working. What have I done? Um, and then it spelled out "I love you" because it was my <laughs> dumb ex-boyfriend <laughs> doing his thing. So um, we didn't see anything, didn't feel anything, uh, but it was kind of cool. And then the other one I have is a little difficult to explain on the air. Uh, Nathaniel and I used to work at the same hotel. We did the night shift together, which was awesome. Yes. Uh, Did we work? No. (laughs) Did we watch scary movies? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Um, And this was before I think you got there, Nathaniel, but I saw this guy wearing this weird black hood kind of walking up and down the, the parking lot. And I was the security guard, quote unquote. Really, I was a glorified turn the lights off and lock the doors. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And they told us if we saw anything suspicious, we just kind of had to observe it. I couldn't engage. You know, they, of course, didn't want any sort of lawsuit to happen. And so I just watched this guy. He wasn't doing anything bad. He's just walking up and down the parking lot. I couldn't see his face. He was wearing this. It wasn't a trench coat. It was kind of one of those long hoodies that cover his head. And I'm gendering him as a man. It could have been a woman. Women can creep people out, too. (laughs) Um, And so it was getting me a little spooked. And so I went to the front desk and looked at the security cameras. And we had a camera that pointed at that uh, parking lot. And there was nobody there. And so that got me a little spooky. So I went back to look at the parking lot. And he was there, walking up and down, walking up and down. I went back to the security camera, nothing. And that went on for about 30 minutes. And eventually I did call the police because I was so freaked out. And they had been patrolling around the area and said that they've seen someone like that. And that is kind of how it ended. And he had died that night. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, he just didn't come up on the, the camera, and it it wasn't a glitchy camera or anything. Nathaniel, you know of the cameras I'm speaking of. Like, oh, yeah. They weren't the best, but they weren't any sort of dumb camera. But that's about as close to the paranormal as I've ever come, and <laughs> I See, have my... a cabinet full of demon books, so yep. I think I'm okay. See, I think the scariest thing that happened at that hotel was the doll convention. You're lying. Oh, Doll yeah. convention? What? Yeah. Why? So it was it was a convention that happened every year for uh, mothers who have had stillborns or oh. had lost children or just crazy Really loved people. hyper-realistic dolls. Yeah, made of silicone. They The, the spooky but, thing was they would treat them as if they were real. And a lot of the ladies who would come every year, they would buy new doll parts and have their doll, like, age up, which was 
very weird and you'd see him talking to these dolls and pushing them in strollers and cradling like, them like seven hundred dollar strollers they were yeah Jeez. yeah wow yeah that's that's awful i did have an experience there too nathaniel yeah uh yeah i was just gonna say but yeah just walking through that uh room that they had all of their stuff out at you know in the dark at night it was one of the more spine tingling experiences oh <laughs> my gosh i had a a call at that convention once and i also did maintenance work and one of the vendors called me because their light had burned out and so i went to their room and all four walls of the hotel room were just covered in doll body parts i would have turned around and be and... like you got this <laughs> and in the corner it gets worse Barrett. Oh. in the corner uh it was like a, a lamp light that was in the ceiling that had burned out and in that corner there was a doll or something sitting on the end table but it was covered in a white sheet oh, Jesus. and i had to stand on a chair to replace the light while this doll under a white sheet was below me and the lady the vendor said that i could not touch it like absolutely not touch it or move the sheet or anything um and i'm sure it had some sort of sentimental value to her whatnot i don't know but that was pretty spooky <laughs> what if it wasn't actually a doll it was just like a head like a human oh, head I I hope so. Well, anyway. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, let's rate the film, and then I'm excited to hear Barrett's scary story. Um, so our screams on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being it's a Disney film, 10 being it's an Exorcist remake. Uh, and the Exorcist remake was not good. Uh, how scared of this film did you get? How scary was it? MJ. Six, um, mostly because of, again, my cochlea. And <laughs> I did enjoy um, some of the scares. Like, they, they pleasantly tingled me. I also give it a six. I think it had some really good moments. It wasn't going to make me have nightmares or anything, but it did what it needed to do very well. Uh, I'm gonna give it a five. I think it the the clown really is is like four out of that five. Well, I think I will give it pretty high eight. What can I say? I like this movie. Okay. <laughs> I re it has <laughs> it has a go. lot of rewatchability to it. So it's also a really good like Halloween party film. Yeah, you you get your friends together and you want a scary movie, but you don't want to not have friends anymore so it's a good one to uh it's a party party film all right um as far as crowns go now this is how good we think the film is uh just as a film i also gave it six uh it definitely has holes and doesn't hold up when you kind of put it under the magnifying glass but i don't think it's a bad film by any means i would also give it a six i like the, I think as far as sound footage, it's a pretty good film. Um, and I think it's a, like, it's not, I mean, it's a haunted house film, but it's not, it's not terrible. It's good. It's good. I am going to be like the downer on this one. I, if, if you had asked me like two days ago before I rewatched it, I would have given this like a seven. But after this most recent rewatch, all of its issues really kind of annoyed me this this time around so i'm gonna go with like a four which is a shame because i it probably deserves higher honestly it just i don't know those those issues got some big eye rolls from me well right. as as a film all that it it handles everything with the found footage aesthetic pretty well i mean they give pretty mm. decent reasons there wasn't a whole lot of we have to stay because we have to. Like, you can kind of understand why they're there. So, found footage style, I think it works pretty well. So, I'll give it a seven. All right. Let's cut the crap, Barrett. Tell us a scary story. Um, okay. You can cut all the all those ums, right? 
No, I'm gonna add. Oh, we're gonna add more. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or drag them out really long. <laughs> oh, no, that's worse. Well, um, I was looking for things to actually talk about, and one of the other videos that you mentioned that you liked, Max, was the um, the Mothman one, or the uh, supposed Moth Mothman one. <laughs> yeah. I love the Mothman. He and I have had romantic dinners multiple times. Oh, lovely. Um, there, there are few cryptids that I love more than Mr. Moth. Yeah. Now, now you didn't light any candles at this dinner because he would have flown directly into the forest, though. <laughs> you just killed Mothman. I didn't need to light any because I am a flame. Oh. He's drawn to me. I mean, you are flame. That was that was love. That was lovely. <laughs> but yeah, your Mothman video it is pretty spooky and creepy until you think about it. <laughs> exactly, especially that the guys took the camera off the creepiness. Like, yeah. dude, what are you doing? Is you... It's like you're filming like a car accident and you look away to look at a duck or something. Like, dude, yes. film the good Very film the so. good shit. What are you doing? <laughs> right, right. You have this cryptid that you have like proof that you could capture. What are you doing? Anyway. Well, um my dad, he served his mission in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Oh, uh, I hate that already. <laughs> But he served there on uh, 1982 to 83. So he okay. and the the bulk of the sightings for the Mothman took place in the 60s. Correct. Eh. 66 to 67. Yes, but he while he was there, there were still people that talked about it. Oh, for sure. There's a whole statue in Point Pleasant. Oh yeah, there's statues. That is thick. <laughs> Yeah, he a, he a thick. It's boy. a very lovely statue. Let's just say I don't know how anyone would have missed that Mothman with those things <laughs> clapping as he's flying around. What if your dad would have showed up and they're like your partner's Mothman? <laughs> That'd be weird. Goals. <laughs> no religious proselytizing would have happened if it was me. <laughs> Leave you flying exactly. around. Opposite. <laughs> We are taking away from your story. I apologize. Keep going. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, he served his mission now over in Point Pleasant, and everybody talked about the Mothman, and everybody gave their theories on what it was, why it's there. The biggest theory that people had was that the Mothman is like a harbinger of doom. Like it doesn't Correct, destroy yeah. anything or anything like that, but it sort of right. It's a it's, an, it's omen. an omen. Thank you. It's a precursor to something about to happen. And of yes. course, we know that in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, there was the crash of the bridge that ended up yep. killing four to six people. So just looking around, I wanted to see if there were any other sort of <laughs> omens like this. And I found one back in 1986 in Upper Ukraine. So there were these workers who claimed to have seen a, quote, black bird with large black wings, no head, but glowing red eyes. <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, black bird, this sounds familiar. But it wasn't, it wasn't just... The Mothman of Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> so... These workers who were working in this factory in Ukraine, uh, there were like a handful of accounts that they would say, you know, there's this thing out there and they'd have to report it because they can't just not not talk about it. It's an important site that they're at, but nobody took them seriously. However, things would get really, really testy for them. When on April 26, Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded. Ooh. So you were, you were right. See, I called it. The Blackbird of yes. Chernobyl. Or Mothman's back, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, that's the thing that I found that's kind of tragic is that there isn't 
a whole lot of backstory about this because everyone who had claimed to have seen it, unfortunately, would have passed away from radiation poisoning. So when they were yeah. when uh, these people were dying and everyone was getting low down, they said, "Hey, by the way, we saw this thing out there." And I just think, where else have we seen this thing before? But yeah, but people weren't alive to tell the tale. Mothman know... two nuclear boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the Mothman and everything about him. Uh, that's fascinating. I'm going to have to look into this a yeah. little bit and see what I can find. The Blackbird of Chernobyl. That's what it's called over there. <gasps> oh, okay. Blackbird of Chernobyl. Um. All right. Any other fun stories we want to talk about or should we wrap this baby up? Do you all want some found footage recommendations? Yeah, let's use that as you're staying spooky, Barrett. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us. All right, so just this year alone, there were two found footage movies that I really enjoyed. One was called Life of Bell. It's a very uncomfortable movie, but it was really well done. The second one is called The Frogman. I've heard about The Frogman. Um, It's good. I... I think you you hear Frogman and you automatically assume this is going to be silly. <laughs> I, I, uh, I hear it's ribbiting. <laughs> oh! Oh! That was a great dad joke. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, well Frogman is really good. Uh, some of my favorites, uh, The Taking of Deborah Logan. Oh, it's so good. Very so good, good. So good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. The ending, as Nathaniel would say, sometimes poops the bed. But yeah. overall, it's it's phenomenal. And she's great. The main woman is great. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tahoe Joe, if you guys enjoy Bigfoot movies. <gasps> I love Bigfoot too. He's like my third favorite cryptid. Yes, Tahoe Joe. <laughs> and I know the guys that do it. It's an awesome movie. Oh, okay. Let's see. Todd, taking up Deborah Logan, of course. Gosh, now I can't think of them all right now. There are just so many good ones. Uh, well, what about the tweet worst tweet. found footage movie I've ever seen? The worst found footage movie I've ever seen is a movie called The Lock-In. It is a mm. Christian-based movie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the villain, the gays or the blacks? A, por- a pornographic <laughs> magazine. Oh, I'm not, okay. I am twist. not making this shit up. This is the plot of the lock-in. I So they do oh, this boy. lock-in, and I'm not entirely sure what a lock-in is. Like, they just, they go into a church and they're locked in for, like, a night and just do prayers and stuff all night. I don't I don't know. But yeah, we did that in middle school, like, but not with the praying. It was like a sleepover. Yeah, a, sl- a big old sleepover. I don't, I don't know what it is, what they do, but anyway. So this this movie is about how these kids accidentally bring a porno into their that into the lock in, and for some reason, ghosts are everywhere. <laughs> it is well because of it porn. is the stupidest <laughs> thing I have ever seen. Honestly, that's horny sounds... ghosts. That sounds real. I kind of want to watch it now. Yeah, now you guys want to watch it. You can find it on YouTube. Just type in the lock-in found footage and you can find it. It would be a good episode just to shit yeah. from the start. <laughs> a part two. We'll have you back. Yes, have me back and we'll talk shit on the lock-in. Um, you gave us a found footage. I'm going to give you one about Bigfoot. Um, it's called Willow Creek. I love Sounds Willow funny. Creek. It is so underrated, and it has one of the scenes that has scared me more than any other movie, where they're in the tent, and they're just listening to what's going on outside. And it's like a straight 20-minute oh, so one-shot. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. As an, as an avid camper, I have done that before, where you wake up in the middle of the night, and you have to pee, but then something's making noise outside, and so you're like, nope, my bladder will hold this in. So help me God. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I also recommend Exists. 
Oh, I need to see that one. Yeah, that's yeah, that's another big. That's movie. probably number one on my Bigfoot movie list. Ugh, I love good old Biggie, Biggie Foot. That that one was made by the dude who directed uh, uh, Blair Witch. Was it? I know. Yes. I know somebody that had something to do with Blair Witch did it. So that's probably why it's so good. Then have you seen Ganjim Haunted Asylum? That's the Korean one, right? One. Yes. yes. Very also good. one of my favorites. It's it's amazing. <laughs> Look at us just just being friends. Aw. Um, Nathaniel, ask... how are you? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask you how you're staying spooky. Ah. Well, besides watching Barrett's uh, TikToks where he does magic because he's a magician, <laughs> how have we not talked about that? Um, because you're the only person who's a sc- or who's scared, scared of magic. Of magic. <laughs> I hate it, guys. I hate it so much. I <clears throat> there was one time I have a cousin who's a magician as well, and we were doing a family home evening thing, and he made me pick a card out of a standard deck. I knew the card. He shuffled the deck, and then he had me peel an orange, and the card was inside the orange. <laughs> And I, I mm-mm, no, thank you. Give me the demons, you magicians, and your freaky voodoo. Uh, so ugh, I don't. So like it. one of my favorite reactions to magic I've ever seen was when David Blaine did that orange trick to Harrison Ford. <laughs> he told, yeah, told him to get he, out of his house. He, he's holding <laughs> up the card and he's just like, "Get the fuck out of my house." <laughs> <laughs> that is me. I do not like it. Magic yeah, I, and goats. Gross. Yeah, I've seen David Blaine perform, and he did something kind of similar, but he had someone literally sew his mouth shut, and then, like, someone, like, wrote their name on a puzzle piece, and then they mixed up all the pieces, and then, like, no, I don't know, but... burned it or something, and then and then someone cut open the his mouth, and then he pulled the puzzle piece out of his mouth. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen. Well, that's when I when yeah. I look at these videos, because on my TikTok page, there's a lot of scary videos that I've shown with my background in magic and just things like that. I could probably look at these videos and be like, oh, they did this with magnets or they did this with threads or this is fake because of X, Y and Z. But there's only been like a handful of videos that I've seen where I'm just like, OK, how did they? I can't explain that. <laughs> You definitely need to send them to us because we'd love to look at those. Um, but besides uh, not being able to sleep for magic, um, I have been on a serial killer kick. That sounds so terrible. Um, I just finished a book about Ted Bundy, and I'm now reading one about the Green River Killer. Terrible people. They're the worst. Um, Netflix does a really cool series though called Conversations with a Killer, um, where they have actual audio tapes and videotapes of these terrible human beings and they kind of tell the story alongside those videotapes very unsettling uh i've had to stop a few times because these human beings are just garbage and it's very Mm -hmm. uncomfortable how they talk about what they've done um other than that i'm reading another really cool book called the broken heart i don't know if nj you've heard of that never heard of it uh it is an amazing amazing book written by nj uh so good i i love it and i'm sad i wasn't on that episode to talk about everything that i love i appreciate you (laughs) Uh, i appreciate you are you how are you staying spooky though i want to know how far you are though just um the killer just died ah all right so not very far but Far enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the incident with Hammy really is what I think kickstarted my my love of it. Yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. How are you staying spooky? I am reading a um like a collection of short stories called "Don't Look: Thirty Tales of Terror" by Blair Daniels. So I've read some of her stuff before, but she's very good at writing stories of just, like, 
kind of ordinary things that are creepy. Like, there's a story that's the light switches are on different walls and, like, you know, then you expect them. But, like, she makes it real freaking creepy. I don't know. I enjoy them. And then as far as watching, um, it's more true crime, but An American Nightmare on Netflix. Have you guys heard of that one? No, I saw it in your notes. Yes. Remind me what it's about again. So there's a like a home invasion and a abduction of this couple. And like the story just sounds absolutely bananas. Oh. And the police don't believe them and it it yeah, it unfolds and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, like you like people are getting on this woman for not believing her, but it's like, dude, the story was really weird. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you can understand from a certain point. Yeah, but the cops, like, totally screwed the dudes. Oh, yeah. Like, they were Definitely. total douchebags. As they are most of the time, unfortunately. Sadly. If I've learned anything from my true crime serial killer dive, it's that the police need a lot of help. <laughs> it's a flip of the coin most of the time. Uh, yeah, for real, unfortunately. Yep. Um, I have to ask, NJ, have you finished Has Been Hotel yet? No, I have not yet, because I have to watch it um, when my wife's not around, because she's like, what are you watching? <laughs> oh. I know. She's she's not into musicals and, like, um, cartoon stuff, unfortunately. Or, you know, demons that say fuck a lot. And seeing... Uh, Nathaniel, what about you? Um. Uh, so I just started listening to... An audiobook in the Alien universe, because of course I did. Um, it is called Aliens Bishop. It uh, came out, I think, like a month ago. Uh, but yeah, it's about Bishop, um, kind of post uh, Alien 3. And it's really fun so far. It's probably not like the best Alien book I have picked up so far, but it's... Um, Still, like, really solid. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm curious to see where it goes, because uh, Bishop is just a great character, and, you know, Alien is always near and dear to my heart. Alien is Alien. It's amazing. All right. Um, Barrett, before we wrap up officially, do you want to tell our listeners where they can find you? So go ahead. You can find me on TikTok at ScareBear0. And that's the new number zero. Yes, number zero. Zero. Okay. Do you have any Twitter, anything, any Instagram? That you I'm want? working my way to do Twitter. Such a shit place. But for Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> like, I like something by someone that I think is funny, and then all of a sudden I get a bunch of political ads for no reason. Uh, true. So, all right, check them out, uh, everyone. I'm not done. My inst. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. My, my Instagram is bear underscore how four three two one, and the YouTube channel that I'm trying to put together uh, don't quite have that yet. So to be continued. Cool. Well, we'll we'll, we'll share it once you do have links for that. And, you know, awesome. Shamelessly plug you then. So that's it for me. Well, All right. Appreciate you guys having me on. It was fun. So. Uh... Yeah, to all of our wonderful listeners out there, stay spooky. Stay spooky. Stay spooky.